Alright, video 5, and this is probably one of the hardest flowcharts you've got to do. I'd actually argue it might even be slightly harder than video uh, 6, 7 and 8, depending on what you're doing. There's a lot of things going on. Um, you're actually trying to make two things kind of work together here. You've got a buzzer to control, and the buzzer's got to be doing one thing while you've got LEDs doing the other. Now this is going to take most of your time to experiment with and solve, but it's going to be one of the sections that gets you uh, the higher grades if you can do it. So you're going to be using an ultrasound sensor, um, which is this thing here. Uh, just quickly I need to make you aware that there's a mistake in the PowerPoint. If I look at the PowerPoint, um, basically this connection here, MD, which stands for mode, I've hooked it up to negative and just basically don't do anything with that, just don't draw that line there at all, leave it blank like I've done, like you can just about make out here um, where I've kind of obviously I've blocked out the rest of the circuit to make it harder for you but you can see mode is not connected. Now just while we're on that note uh, it's worth knowing how these ultrasonic rangefinders work, it does explain it here but you actually need to use, it, although it's kind of a sensor and you would think oh you just hook that up to an input it actually needs a connection to an output on your pick chip as well so this one called TR stands for trigger and the one called EC stands for echo. Now if you know how an ultrasonic rangefinder works it's basically a speaker, uh, sorry, a speaker and a microphone and what happens is your pick is programmed when you use the ultrasonic command to send a, sig like send a sound wave into trigger which comes out of the speaker and that sound wave goes out, it's an ultrasonic sound wave so you can't hear it bounces off an object and then bounces back and this little one here is a microphone and what this little module does is it basically times how long it took between sending the ping out and that ping or that sound wave returning and because we know speed is distance divided by time if you know the speed of sound and you know how long it took you can rearrange that formula and you can work out the distance that the object must be away so everyone knows the speed of sound, I think is it 300 and something meters a second um, but there we go so pings out, comes back in and what happens is the through the echo pin the little there's actually a little brain built into this sensor that's why they cost about a tenner to buy it sends a number into the pick chip and that number corresponds to how far away that object is in centimeters so here it's saying 150 centimeters away the echo pin would be transmitting the number 150 to the pick chip. If the object was 10 centimeters away, it would be transmitting the number 10. It has to be hooked up with an output and an input. You don't have to worry about turning it on with an output. All of that's taken care of in the flowchart, uh, the command that is used to control it, but you do just have to have an appreciation of what's going on. Okay? These, by the way, are great if you want to build like a, a buggy or a robot that can sense when something's in front of it. It could be for just even for like a speed warning sign you could detect when a car goes past for instance. Um, they are about a tenner if you buy them from the official source but you can now get them a lot cheaper on eBay for like a couple of quid if anyone's interested. So really really cool to mess around with. One of the, the best sensors to have with robots and automatic systems. Anyway so how are you going to program this thing? Well I'm going to show you what the program needs to do first by showing you one I did earlier. Now I wouldn't be so nice as to show you all the connections, I want you to figure that out, but as it says you're going to need one buzzer hooked up with a transistor to an output of your pick chip, you're going to need your ultrasonic module hooked up and you're going to need five LEDs. I'm going to leave it down to you to connect them where you think they need to go, but use the PowerPoint to help you. Alright, so sorry, this is what it should do. Um, Basically I want it to behave like a parking sensor on a car, so when you reverse, the closer you get to the object, the quicker it beeps, and actually the more LEDs come on, so you've got like a visual indication and an audible indication of when you're getting near to the object. So if I press play, I'll talk you through it now. At the moment, I can click here and look at my distance. I did say in the instructions, um, if the object's over 50 centimeters away, no buzzing and no LEDs should be lit. And then at 40 to 50 centimeters, it should buzz every half a second, and and all five um, and only one LED should be lit, and so on and so forth. So you can read these instructions for your timing 
bits for your flowchart, so I want you to use these time intervals I've mentioned based on these distances. Now, just to show you it working, this is what, if you get it working like this, you must have done it right. So, 50 centimeters away, no buzzing, no LEDs. Uh, if I drop down to 40 centimeters away, I don't know if you can just about pick up that buzzing through my microphone, but you've got one LED lit and a very slow buzz. If I move to 30 centimeters, okay, the buzzing's a bit quicker, and two LEDs are lit. If I move to 20 centimeters, 26, even quicker buzzing, three LEDs. This is a very annoying noise. Drop to 10, between 10 and 20, I've got four and very quick buzzing, and if I'm under 10 all the LEDs and the buzzer goes constantly and then of course if I reverse to a safe distance anything above 50 it all turns off again so that's what you've got to program you are writing the flowchart to make a parking sensor but if you configure this out you could easily translate that to a robot or a buggy or anything along those lines right I'm just gonna pause the video while I delete my flowchart so I wouldn't want to give that away to you so I'll be back like in a flash See, told you I'll be back quick. So, you're going to be using the ultrasonic command. Now, um, you can probably guess, well, it's just down here. And you need to set it up. Um, there's ultrasonic. It's specifically designed for that sensor. Double click on it, as we do, and I'll talk to you about what you've got to set up here. Now, here, where it says trigger and echo, you need to tell it the pins on your chip you connected to. Remember, trigger is an output so it could be any of them between 0 and 7, I chose 6 and echo is the input pin that you've connected it into now it's a, it's a kind of a digital signal but it, it's not, it's actually a number but you can basically hook it up to any of the five inputs on this chip um, this is the bit you'll not be familiar with yet um, it says variable, now if you are from programming background or have done any computing you will have known in the in when you're doing coding or programming you have these things called variables which are like a little bit of memory in your program where you can save numbers to and then you can do like maths on those numbers or you can remember them for use later on in the program so uh, circuit wizard basically has letters which it assigns to these variables so each of these letters denotes a space in memory where you can save a different number you can pick any of them you like just remember which one you chose so I'm going to choose a variable A and what will happen is when my sensor reads the distance and sends it into the pick chip, uh, say it measured 125 centimeters, it will now store the number 125 in that variable A. All right, so it's storing a number in a bit of memory. And what we can do now is we can look at that bit of memory and essentially your program is going to be reading what's in the memory and seeing what number it is and if it's in different ranges it's going to do different things a bit like the uh, light sensor challenge from challenge three or four can't remember which one in there you were looking at a range of different analog signals one after another and seeing which one it fitted into here rather than looking at analog signals you're going to be comparing um, a variable okay so we've used these two before we're now going to use the third one called compare and what we can do is we can you used to be able to compare you can actually compare analog signals or look you've got all of your variables here so I'm gonna set it up just for measuring one distance I'm gonna set this program to uh, just basically light up, make everything come on when it's over 50 centimeters and make everything go off when it's under 50 centimeters away so my variable is a that's where my ultrasonic module is gonna store the distance and I'm going to say if it's greater than or equal to a number, I'm just going to put the number 50, then we're going to have like a yes or no decision. Uh, by the way, later on if you want to, you can actually expand these to have and or or. So if you wanted to do if A is bigger than something and another number, say B is less than something. So you can actually do like multiple levels of decision making, but don't worry about it for now. So if A is greater than 50, so I'll put here what this is actually saying is distance greater than 50 centimeters that's what we're actually asking with that box so I'm reading the distance in then I'm asking a question the distance I've read in is it greater than 50 centimeters um, if it is if the answer is yes then I'm going to turn on in my case all five of my LED, 
FDs which I hooked up on those outputs and my buzzer and I'm just going to keep them on and if it's not in that range so if it's uh, less than 50 centimeters I'm going to turn everything off okay so all my LEDs and my buzzer I should really put captions in turn all off turn all on remember your captions I have said this before that's really all there is to it so just to show you that working I'll go back to my flowchart now remember this is now a different program so if I press play right at the moment my distance is 96 centimeters which is greater than 50 if I drop it down below 50 everything turns off and if we look at the flowchart window you can see what it's doing so at the moment it's going read the value into variable A is it greater than 50 well no it's 41 at the moment so no and low everything turn everything off if I make it bigger than 50 is it bigger than 50 yes turn everything on with a very annoying noise right so I'm not going to really give you any more help other than to say you're going to have to scale this up now to do different things you're going to have to turn on different numbers of LEDs depending on different distances and you're going to have to make the buzzer flash at different sp uh, buzzer beep sorry buzzers don't flash uh, at different time intervals depending on how far away the object is as per how I showed you at the very start of this video like I said this is an extremely challenging flowchart but it wouldn't be testing you if it didn't get harder and harder if you can nail this one to be fair you can probably do almost most problems you're going to come across in AS and early A2 systems and control. All right, so give yourself a good pat on the back if you manage to achieve this. All right, um, that will do the videos for now. I hope to upload videos six, seven, and eight in the near future. But as I said in class the other day, I want this one that you should by about a week of doing this in your private study time, you should be at about this challenge after one week. All right. Um, for anyone else out there in YouTube land, if you are sad enough to be watching these videos, I know I've got quite a few subscribers, I kid you not, thank you very much. Um, if anyone does want this Circuit Wizard file or the PowerPoint that I keep banging on about, just send me a private message uh, through YouTube with your email address and then I will send it out to you. I don't want to put my email on YouTube for obvious reasons because I'll probably just get spammed. Alright, have a good day, see you later.